Hi, I'm Eric Poulin. And I'm Robin Poulin. We're the co-founders of Calendar Budget, and welcome to the Calendar Budget Podcast. I can pay cash, I can pay check, I can pay wire transfer, I can pay gift card, I can pay credit, I can pay anything you like. I can pay cash, I can pay check, I can pay wire transfer, I can pay gift card, I can pay credit, I can pay anything you like. I'm not a proponent of child labor, but kids should work, at least at home. Definitely assist. (laughs) Assist? Yeah. They should do all the work. (laughs) You can't keep up. Isn't that why we have kids so that they could be our slaves? (laughs) <laughs> right. I'm sure that's what they feel like. Yeah, well, as it turns out, We're their we slave. are their slaves. For sure. <laughs> Drive me here, buy me this, make me this, I want this. Yep, exactly. Yes. Well, but you don't want that spoiled child, and part of changing that understanding is involving them in what's being done in the home. And yeah. Other things. Yeah, so we're going to talk today, again, we're on the topic of um, teaching children about money. Part of that is teaching them how to, the value of work, how to do work at starting at the house. Yep. Um, we're also going to cover various topics, budgeting, savings, um, maybe how to make good value for money and uh, credit and debt, touch on a little bit from a child's perspective. Mm-hmm. So. Getting, teaching kids the value of work is um, huge because if you don't teach children the value of work, they will become lazy slobs. And I want, I want, I want. At least they will, um, they'll start to develop a a self-righteous, deserving attitude Mm -hmm. and they'll expect you to do everything for them. They won't take in consideration other people's feelings, needs, and abilities. Yeah, and that's not the, it's not that you don't want to serve them as a parent. Yeah. I mean, of course we want to do that. Like caring yeah. for people is a part of the human condition and it's valuable. But a, a huge part of the human condition as well is becoming independent. Yeah. And that means knowing how to do work and deriving the satisfaction and value that comes from contributing to an effort that's needed so some kids you'll find are very independent naturally that they want to i do it myself yes and that can also be a problem because it means that they can't or won't take direction so when a task needs to be done some balance in there somewhere yeah the fact is children are part of your family Mm -hmm. They're part of a household, and every household requires maintenance. There's work that needs to be done. Um, And I don't mean maintenance like fixing a broken faucet. (laughs) Like fixing a broken faucet or, yeah, anything like that. Like simple things like laundry needs to be done as part of a household. Like the dishes need to be done. Food needs to be made. Like these daily activities that we so often just take for granted. But even with fixing a faucet, you can say, hey, come here and hold the flashlight. Yeah, absolutely. how this is done. And they realize that you don't have to call in a professional for everything. That is okay to not have to have a professional for. Yeah, you shouldn't, in fact, do that. Um, Contributions from kids should be age appropriate, of course. You're not gonna ask a four-year-old to cook dinner. Yeah. Um, They can assist. Maybe they can stir stir something or turn the dial to the right number you know they can assist in their ways um one thing my sister brings up every now and then uh, she's like yeah i loved what you did with your kids because i remember your toddler the youngest one as soon as you opened that dishwasher she would come running and had to help empty the dishwasher and so you had to make sure all sharp and dangerous items were out of the way before the toddler got there yeah i mean it it makes sense to to help have people start at a young age do what they can and as their abilities and level of understanding improves they can take on greater responsibilities Mm -hmm. Um, now when they turn teenagers suddenly they forget everything they forget how to do everything and they're not always they don't want to do anything anyway 
They don't want to help around the they house. They forget when they don't want to do it. That's what happens. Because there are times... So all like, the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I... Well, sometimes. I do find that uh, every now and then they like to do a gourmet meal. And they'll look yes. up a new recipe online. And you're like, wow, this is, this is amazing. And you just show gratitude. Absolutely. Yeah, they'll tend to get into moods of a cleaning mood or a cooking mood and you're like just just be grateful when it happens because it's not going to be every day and what's really fun is when they start calling their sibling on look at your broom it's a mess <laughs> it's so wonderful <laughs> you just sit yeah. back and listen yeah so since everybody in a household and a family contributes to the maintenance of the household they also should contribute to some of the income from the household as well. Which brings us to the topic of allowances. There's a lot of discussion on parenting forums and financial forums and various different places on how to handle allowances. Yeah. There's this way to do it, there's that way to do it, and people are strong proponents of one way or another. Some say to tie it to chores, some say never tie it to chores. Yeah, we, we've done We've Mix. tried a lot of these various different things, like with our own kids, tried it, didn't like it, tried it, didn't like it, tried it, didn't like it. So we've experimented with a number of these, so we can speak to most of them, at least from experience. Some of them worked for a time, and then other, yep. at a certain point, they just needed a new method. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So you mentioned a few things there that sometimes an allowance is tied to a specific chore. Mm -hmm. So you're basically, um, you're getting money for doing this work. It teaches wage labor uh, correlation. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with this, um, but there are there are some problems with how it plays out in the end. Yeah. But in the end, there's nothing wrong with that arrangement. Um, so with with any of these arrangements, it's got to be up to you. And we're just going to speak from our experience having tried a lot of these different ways. So when we did um, allowance for chore, before I say what I think happened, what, what was your feeling about that experience when we were tying people's um, allowance? You're going to get this allowance for doing this particular chore. How do you think that played out? Well, sometimes we had occasions where the kid just didn't do the chore they forgot or they were lazy, just didn't really feel like it. So they didn't get an allowance and then they had no money to spend and then they were frustrated and missed out on things that they wanted to participate in. Yeah, that was the experience I had as well, that um, they didn't look at it as I'm contributing to the household community. labor mm -hmm. community and I'm getting an allowance but my assignment is this chore. They looked at it differently. They looked at it as I have something I have to do. I'm getting I'm getting paid for this specific thing and if they don't feel like doing that thing, they're negotiating in their mind. How, how badly do I want this allowance? Whereas that's not the point of this. Yeah. It's not that you're earning your allowance, it's that you're supposed to be contributing to the house, right? And we're just grateful for your contribution. Exactly. So we both had that same kind of feeling about it. We talked about it at the time, this was ages ago. Yeah that um, they started tying their allowance as an optional thing for this chore. And if they didn't feel like doing that chore, they would just not do it and it would be left undone. Yeah. And that means you or us. I had to do it or we'd harp on them about it and they'd be like, I don't want my allowance then, I don't care. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, so that didn't work out too well. So then we tried um, doing something very different. We tried this more altruistic system where everybody is getting an allowance and the allowance is this much. Separate from that and unrelated to that, we all have chores to contribute to the house. Mm -hmm. And you're going to get your allowance regardless. It has nothing to do with it. And they would be like, so you're telling me if I don't do my chore, I'm still going to get my allowance? This was the negotiating thing that was like, no, you're missing the point. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You're missing the point. The point You're is. contributing to the family and everybody is expected to do that. But if I don't do it, 
I'll still get my allowance, right? And it just, they couldn't get their heads around Please it. Please hear us out. They couldn't get their heads around it. But how did that, when we did that, how do you think that went? Um, they were a little bit older then, and so it was a new thing. It worked for a little while. We also gave them opportunity to said that there are some other major chores mm. that if you really, really, really want to earn some extra money, we can discuss what other major chores need to be done yeah. that we can discuss a few for that. Yeah, I think in the end, so same page uh, on that, we found in the end that that one kind of lasted a little bit longer and it was more stable. We felt a little bit better about giving an allowance that was just fixed and we didn't have to like measure did you how do it job did how you do how complete did you do and yeah it was like you just you're gonna get your allowance and you're expected to do this and if you didn't do the chore we could have a separate discussion about this that was not tied to the money it was just more of a we need you to contribute around here yep. um, so that was a better way of approaching it we found personally having tried both ways mm -hmm. um, and then the last thing that you said about these larger projects, so if they, if we needed somebody to wash the car or vacuum the car mm -hmm. or periodic things that we needed cleaned, like, I don't even remember, but cleaning, Bathroom or the floor. cleaning the garage or something, that's like, you don't yeah. do it every week. Yeah. Um, we would pay them additional, we did it for cooking meals as well. When, mm -hmm. cause by the time that we were doing this method, they were a little older, still not really old. They were like, between 10 and 14, 15? Yeah. But they, they, they could all, even the 10 year old could prepare a full meal at that age. Yeah. Because and they make fantastic food is because they were yeah. all involved. They're pretty much close together in age. Yeah. As they grew up, they, like you involved them in, yeah. in cooking and I, I mean, we I did as well. We ensured safety. So we taught them yeah. skills to be able to work with things that they are able to use. And it wasn't that they had to do it on their own. No. Like, you, you would help them or I would help them do it, but they were kind of like, a little, the they were the boss. lead. Yeah. They were the lead. We were the sous chef. Yeah, exactly. For those days. And they would earn whatever, five or $10 for a meal. Yeah. It varied depending on the time of and their effort. Yeah. day and when the, the meal and so forth. Yeah. But that went pretty good. Um, and we found that that was, that, that extra money for doing these extra chores was a good way to sort of, tempt them, lure them into getting the job done um, because they, at that point in their life, they were hungry f for extra money, right? Yeah, and also helped out with us as parents because with them getting older, they had a little bit more demands on our time as well of needing to take them to different places for social things. And so we just couldn't keep up with everything. And so best of both worlds. Yeah. Yeah, but having the kids participate in these um, chores and household tasks and household maintenance, yeah. um, it, it's not only about the money or the allowance. This teaches them long-term transferable skills that they're going to be able to yeah. use for the rest of their life in their own house, but maybe in future careers as well. Yes. It teaches responsibility. It teaches dedication. It teaches sometimes you just got to do things when you don't feel like it. Yeah. And that's a just huge skill to have because when you get to your job you're not going to feel like going in every day mm -hmm. but you still got to go do it that's what a professional does they just go to work and get life it done. skills yeah absolutely um so so those things were valuable i remember though when um i was a kid my dad would involve me in these little household things um, and i was like the 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 sit on the board guy you know sit on the <laughs> board while i cut this piece of lumber yep. or help me find this particular tool. And so you, you learn by observation how to do all these things. And, every, and then as I got older, he's like, okay, you, make, you can make this cut or you screw this thing in and I'll shine the light. Um, you start to get these skills building over time and it builds not only skills, but it builds confidence. Mm -hmm. So that when we were old enough to buy a house, I was completely confident in being able to maintain a house. Yep. It didn't mean I knew how to do everything, but I was confident that I could approach anything with some, with some problem determination skills, and I had enough basic tool skills to... Yeah. You're willing to take a little bit more of a chance above what your ability was. Yeah. Just to learn something, and 
that was still within safety guidelines. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that, that worked very well for us. Um, Actually, I've seen you do that with the girls as well, that you've involved them, like you built a skate ramp and yep. you taught them safety guidelines that they are able then to take on any project and to be wise about what they're going to get be involved with. Yeah, I mean, if you're, as long as you have basic safety in mind, um, you don't have to be scared to try something. Yeah. Like a circular saw is not, it is scary, <laughs> but it doesn't have to be so scary that you can't do it. Right. Right? It, it's just, it's loud, but it doesn't mean it's scary. You just be safe and you can do anything. Exactly. Yeah. Um, one of the things that we taught, taught our kids, and this is something we've talked about in a previous episode as well, is that when they receive their allowance, it's not just 100% disposable income. Like you don't get 100% of that allowance. Um, it, and it's, this was propagated, at least I think, uh, from what my parents did with me. And we've kind of followed the same pattern with our kids. Mm -hmm. So when I was a kid, I would get an allowance. It was like a dollar a week. <laughs> yep, this big money. Way back when. When it actually went somewhere. Yeah, when, when you could go to the corner store and get a lot of candy for a dollar. Yeah. I'm not even that old, but really, um, I would get this allowance. And we'll just use a dollar as the number, but it could be $5 or $10. The percentages are what matter. Mm -hmm. So I'd get a dollar and 10% of that money went immediately to donation. Mm -hmm. In my case, it was going to tithing, to church, mm -hmm. but it could just as well have gone to donation to some local charity. Mm -hmm. Then 40% of my allowance went immediately to my long-term savings and we called it school savings i think or mission savings or something like that it was some kind of saving mm -hmm. that was <clears throat> never to be touched not accessible to me and the only money that i ever saw of my allowance that i actually saw and was allowed to handle and touch and spend was 50 percent of it the remaining 50 percent mm -hmm. so i knew that every week although i was getting a dollar in this example I'm only receiving 50% of it. And so over time, I just started to think, oh, each week I'm getting 50, 50 cents, 50 cents. Um, but in the back of my mind, I would still remember, and periodically, maybe every quarter or so, my dad would sit down with me and review my accounts with me and say, okay, look at your savings. This is your education savings. You have, this is your account, you have $400 in there now. I'm like, oh, $400? <laughs> That's a lot more than That's 50 cents. That's so much money. I couldn't believe how much money I had saved. And I'm like, I had saved this money. Mm -hmm. You know, my parents forced me to save it. But what a sense of accomplishment. Yes. It was unbelievable to me that I could possibly have saved that much money. Um, and you can really, <laughs> like if you help a child save that much, especially if it's in a way that they cannot touch when they're really young, right? Um, they'll be amazed at what they can accomplish with a little bit of discipline, even though at this stage in their life, it's forced discipline. They don't even know better. Yep. When they get older, they'll definitely push back on that. And they do, uh, they don't want you controlling their money anymore. They want, they want control of it, even if they are going to save it. Yep. And, and rightfully so it's their money. And it was never meant that we or my dad was going to ever do anything with that money other than give it to me yep. but it was intended for long-term savings and watching it grow over all that time was fantastic yeah it gets exciting i remember the point where i got to and i saw a comma in my bank account that meant i had over a thousand dollars yeah and i got out of the bank one because i had just deposited my money myself and i got it i came in like, look at this i have a comma in my bank account yeah I remember the first time I had a comma as well. Similar thing. My dad had brought me in uh, after reviewing my accounts with me Then I was getting a little older at this point, like nine or 10. Mm -hmm. And he's like, you're getting enough money in the savings account now that maybe we should do something more than put it like in a savings account. Let's get a GIC. Oh yeah. And so he took me to the bank and he's like, we're going to put this in for a one year GIC. That means you can't, you won't be able to touch it for a year. You weren't going to touch it anyway. So this isn't really a bad thing. 
you're going to get better interest on it. So he'd explain that all to me. And then when I, the year came up, there was a comma in the account. Oh, yeah. that was an amazing day. Yeah, going from 50 cents to $1,000, that would just like floor you as a child. I mean, obviously it took a long time and there yeah. were some raises in the allowance over the years as well, of course. Yeah. But um, yeah, that, that kind of forced saving can teach a child from a young age that you don't spend 100% of what you earn. Mm -hmm. It has places to go and it has work to do and it'll do that work on its own and you don't need to touch it or even see it very often. Mm -hmm. And you see only a piece of it. And that's a great way to teach children um, to, to not spend it all. Yep. Um, we also use the point system for a while. I forget the name of the website. We were trying to look it up earlier. I think it's probably gone out of business by now. But there's lots of other point systems. Just look it up. Uh, app for chores or something yeah. like that. There's like points systems or chore systems. And what basically what it did is it would... So each child had their own account they could log into mm -hmm. on the app. When they logged in, it knew who they were. And they would have their assigned chore yep. in the app. And, and they would other chores available as well. Optional chores, mm -hmm. yes, that they could claim. And if somebody, if they claimed it, it wasn't available to sibling two. They had to get it done then. Exactly. So they would mark every day that they did it or whenever they did it, and they'd accumulate points for every time this was done. And, and then we would get a report as the, the parent monitors of this account. So and so reported that they did this, and then we could just check, yeah. occasionally spot check that they were not. And each just not just saying that they did it and not yeah. do it. And each thing had value associated to it. Yes. So you got points for every chore and some of the bigger chores had more points and you know if you if you were assigned to take the garbage out that's once or was it once a week, twice a week? Twice well once a week every other week depending on Yeah. So that's a, a chore that's bigger than whatever than feeding the dog or something. Yeah. Um it just it takes more labor, and but you don't have to do it very often. So, you know, you'd you'd earn your points for these chores, and the point the system would tally. You've got, you've got, forty eight points now, yep. and then you can spend those points on various rewards. And then you again, the parent, set up the rewards, mm -hmm. and you can say these many points equals. You could say dollars, for example, or this many points is a night out for fast food with like date with dad or date with mom. Yeah. And uh, they could, and then if they had something that they were saving for specifically, you could add that specific thing to the point reward system and they could like yeah. save up for this thing. So they can see their, their, their points accumulating. It's like a little savings account, but uh, chore points as it were. Yep. I think on one occasion we may have even said, okay, at this short period of time, we're going to do a, a price match. So if you save these many points and you get to this level number, we'll match it. Oh, I think you're right. Yeah. I remember doing that once. Weren't we clever? <laughs> yeah. Try to change what they're willing to save. Yeah. Yeah. If you re it helps them want to achieve the goal, right? Yeah. Um, and before we used this app that did it, we, we used a whiteboard. Oh, yeah. And we would just track everybody's points. We in called a, it the Poolin store. In a, pool, a public area. And then once every week or two, we would like, we had this stash of treats that we called the Poolin store. And they could spend their points on various treats that we had labeled. This is three points. This is 10 points. Yeah. And if they wanted to save up for something that was 50 points, then it might take them two or three weeks. weeks. Yeah. And they would buy just one little thing and then s accumulate their points so they could save up. So yeah. that taught them how to save as well. Yeah. And, that, and it was fun. Yeah. Um, and kids can be incredibly helpful when they're sharing to save to meet a goal. When they want that big thing, suddenly some of these bigger tasks that you didn't want to do <laughs> or had available are getting done. Or they can be encouraging as well to their siblings to say, hey, you know what? Uh, we would like to all do this activity. So if we all work together and save our points, then we can do this. Yeah, they were gaming the system after a while. Gang, yeah. Ganging up on us. Actually, I think we but it was great. that one because we th said we could all go for a mini putt if everybody saves their points. I remember doing that one yep. time. Glow in the dark mini putt. Yes. That was fun. Yeah. Yeah, now as they get older, um, probably that's only going to work with really young children. 
But as they start to get older and they may have part-time jobs, then you know those can include things like paper route babysitting, you know, selling, doing work for a neighbor or yeah. something. Snow shoveling, cutting the lawn. Sure. Maybe you get an entrepreneurial spirit in there that yeah. wants to like... Creativity something or other and sell it. The old lemonade stand idea doesn't work too often anymore. In fact, I heard once of a city shutting somebody down because bylaws didn't permit sale of goods. Seriously? <laughs> it was ridiculous. It's just some cranky neighbor, I think, that was just being an idiot. Yeah. Well, um, our kids loved it and our neighbors loved it. They thought, oh, yeah. look at these cute little entrepreneurial spirits. Exactly. Exactly. That's how most people are. But there's yeah. always a crotchety old person Somebody somewhere. Somebody a bad day or a bad week or a bad month. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but it might go beyond that. Somebody, you know, you may have some some kid that has a really amazing talent at something, yeah. some kind of craft or, or whatever, yeah. and maybe it's a saleable product. Like we know somebody um, from a city near us who as a young child became really interested in sewing. And she started designing her own clothes. Yep. And started selling these custom made clothes or was she skirts. also doing repairs and skirts she was selling mm -hmm. and scarves, I think. Yep. Uh, and she was, she actually did okay with that. Yeah. And she turned that into a career. She's now gone across to London, England doing training and making all these fancy dresses and everything and learning all this yeah. stuff that she wouldn't be learning here. Yeah. Yeah. And it's amazing. And she even had her skirts in a local shop at one oh, point. Oh, like on consignment sale? Yes. <laughs> it was awesome. amazing. Totally thrilled. And our oldest loved buying her skirts because they were comfortable and modest. Yeah. Nice. Now, when your kids get to the part-time job ages, just make sure that they have their priorities straight. It shouldn't interfere with school and this and that. But, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we have a daughter now who's working at a fast food restaurant nearby and, um, is working like ridiculous amount of hours there. Yes. Um, and it's coming up against borderline. the borderline of interfering with school. Yeah. So I, I talked with her. I don't know if you knew that, yep. but I talked with her about that and said, look, we haven't said anything right now uh, until now about uh, your schooling. But if you start falling behind on schooling, you're going to have to cut back your hours at work. Mm -hmm. And she didn't say anything, but I could tell she was shocked that <laughs> that would even be a thing. That that was a thing. <laughs> yeah. How dare us interfere with her life. Yep. But yeah. I, Sorry, we're interested in your future. Similar discussion we had too is even if you don't even consider what it's doing now to your education, consider later on if you don't get your education, you are so excited to be having this income now, but there will be a limitation where right now you don't have expenses. Yeah. In a couple of years, two, four years, whatever, when expenses really start coming in and you're limited by your education, then you won't be able to have the income you need to fend for what you really want. Yeah. Yeah. So it's important that a child um, with whatever their income is, be it allowance or part-time job or whatever, mm -hmm. that they have a budget. Yes. Don't allow them to spend 100% of their income because they'll start to get accustomed to having a hundred percent of that disposable income and it's that's just not reality um, as an adult and not that again we're not that we want to push them into adulthood too early but we want to teach them sound principles yes. and saving a good portion of your income is a, is the way to go for sure um, also uh, make sure that they learn that that saving can be used for larger purchases that they want that they can delay their gratification until mm -hmm. they have enough savings. They don't get the thing until they have enough money for it. Even if a parent can buy it now and then pay be, you back later. Like we, we would call ourselves the pool and bank sometimes when our kids would want to buy something expensive. And we've made a few exceptions to that rule, but only, yeah, very rarely. only a few. Um, and it's because we knew that they were already working to save yeah. for that money and they had, they were guaranteed to be having that money coming very soon. Right. And virtually 100% of their income until it was paid off would go to paying down yeah. that debt with us. But we rarely did that, and only under these stringent circumstances yeah. or conditions, I should say. And as they age, um, they should start taking on more responsibility for their own uh, 
needs. things that they need, like their yeah. personal care, their clothing, their mm -hmm. cell phone bill, and you know the the income as it increases, they should start taking these things on because they they need to see that you don't get to just spend all this money, mm -hmm. and that cash flow has a purpose and it yep. covers your expenses and you have real expenses. And again, last time we talked about that monopoly exercise that can really, such an amazing way to show the value of uh, where your money is going. Yeah. Um, yeah, and if, if they spend all their money, then they can't go out with their friends. You know, they have to sacrifice something. Yeah. They, they can't just come to mom and dad and say, oh, I, I had to pay my cell phone bill, so now I can't go to the movies. Can I, can you, no. Or I just went and bought my favorite jeans I've been waiting for. They went on sale and I want to go to the movies too. Yeah. Nope. Sorry. You, natural consequences. Yes. Right. Makes sense to teach them. This is, and it's going to be a hard lesson because you don't, you never want to say no to your child who you love, mm -hmm. but this is a lesson um, that they need to learn. Sometimes they can't have what they want mm -hmm. and they have to sacrifice because of choices that they made. So it's a little bit of tough love there. It's not even that tough. It's just, it, it breaks your heart to say yeah. no to your child, but there are some, that's how you learn. Yeah. Some individuals that just really can't grasp that information and, or just really don't want to. And so if you take the time to, walk through and find the way that they will learn and you might have to teach it differently to that one child compared to the rest because they just don't get it and if it's still not getting through maybe you need to help find somebody else that understands how to speak their language yeah that you don't have to be the be all and end all of all answers yep exactly um switching topics then to getting good value for your money this is another important lesson for kids because they're going to be so influenced by the power of advertising, by peer pressure, yes. um, that they're just going to want to go and buy whatever is put in front of their face. You know, the latest TikToker influencer said they use this thing, and I must use it as well. Yep. Um, and that's it's not a terrible thing, but you just have to be careful that you're not losing yourself um, and and making sure that you're getting good value for your money. So that involves things like comparison shopping. Mm -hmm. uh, looking at reviews, checking is the brand name really worth that extra 90% <laughs> sometimes? I know. Is it really worth that extra money compared to the no-name brand mm -hmm. for the label? Yes. Um, sometimes the quality is better as we've discussed in the past. Often you're just paying for the name. Um, and so how important is that to you? And there's a, there's a trade-off. The trade-off is you don't have money that could be spent on some other things that you mm -hmm. might also want. We have found that uh, their education uh, growing up with these ideas has transferred that now they take their friends to go to like a secondhand store that's yeah. off in a nicer neighborhood that might have nicer clothes then. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, because secondhand stores tend to be fed by the neighborhoods around them. So they, they actually drive to a wealthy neighborhood secondhand store and are more likely to get brand name, nicer, yeah. quote unquote, nicer stuff. And they, re they tend to replace their stuff a lot earlier than, than some other areas as well. So you can get stuff near new condition at these secondhand stores. Yeah. So that advertising and, and that pressure to get them to buy brand name stuff and maybe stuff they don't need, that same kind of advertising pressure can push them to get credit early in life. Mm -hmm. um, you've seen this in like college, the, the day one of college when people are coming to the campus for the first time. All the tables out. There's like tables and tables and tables of come and come into my magic yeah. Pinocchio land where I'll, you'll never leave again. Um, and it's credit is so easily and readily given to students. There is value in them uh, having access to credit only for building a credit score. Yeah. But they have to be taught how to use it wisely and to not let just let it run away. Yeah. Um, the advertising is going to tell them to all get credit cards, spend as much as they want, and all you have to do is pay the minimum amount. 
It's so simple. Never, never, not the minimum. <laughs> but it's terrible. Do not do this. This is a recipe for um, accumulating credit card debt that will be very difficult to pay off for many, many mm -hmm. years. And if you aren't a person that can stick to your guns and not spend on credit, then it might be best for you to avoid credit until you can learn what to do wisely. <laughs> yeah. Now, no few kids are going to feel that way, um, but as a parent, you can make some strong recommendations. By the time they're that age, how much are they going to heed you? I don't know. But hopefully you can at least advise them. It's fine to get a credit card, but only buy things when you can pay for it because you have the money in the bank. Use yeah. a credit card as a convenience tool. It's helpful for buying things online because you can't do that with a regular debit card. Mm -hmm. And it's just convenient because credit cards are accepted almost everywhere. But every time you make a payment, or at least once a week or twice every two weeks, pay off the full amount owing on the card. And never ever use this card to buy something that you don't have cash in the bank to cover. If you want to teach your kids a really fun way of how to respect credit, this awesome little skit we saw one time with Saturday Night Live with Steve Martin makes us laugh every time, but it's perfect. Do not buy things you can't afford. Yeah. Sound financial advice. Yes. Yeah. Um, with credit cards, uh, you, a lot of youth are tempted to pay just the minimum amount. Mm -hmm. um, and that means they're just going to keep buying, accumulating um, purchases on the card and only pay that minimum amount and they just see that as a way to get stuff. Yeah. But that minimum amount, if you sit down with them and show them how much interest they're paying, um, it could take them literally years to pay off a credit card paying just that minimum amount. Mm -hmm. And the interest that they're paying towards the debt, and on a credit card it's like 22%, it's really high. Outrageous, yeah. That interest could be used to buy so many other things. Like our friend, she was saying with her kid when he got old enough to have a credit card, was doing exactly that, paying yeah. minimum payments. Yeah, yeah. And she showed him and said, you know, you really love this band, don't you? So all this interest you had to pay, uh, that could have been another one of their CDs that you could have had. Or that new brand and pair of shoes that you wanted. Anything like that, something that is of great value to them that they see what that cost is then in something that they comprehend and matches and that's in their heart. They're like, oh, I could have. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Keep in mind when you owe money on an item, you don't actually own it yet. <laughs> yeah. Somebody else owns it. The bank owns it until you pay for it in full. Yeah. And that includes paying off your credit debt as well. So mm -hmm. that's covering, um, the value of work and teaching that to kids as they're young, setting a budget, teaching them a little bit about savings, getting good value for money, and a little bit about credit and debt. All things that are super important to teach kids at as young an age as possible. Um, and the more you can do that, the better you can do that, the better you're gonna be setting your kids up for future success. And the great thing is though, it's not just our own kids that we're helping it's a society then that we're helping to change because everybody is being educated then by their own parents, hopefully, or by a friend. And generations to come. Yeah. They'll teach the same way that you were, the same way that I was taught by my dad about my allowance. We propagated that. It was a great yes. way to do it. And I hope our kids do something similar with their kids. Yep. And be there as well for anybody else that wants to learn be open to being able to support them in the idea of learning how to be financially savvy. Yeah. Teach your kids, teach them well. Until next time, happy budgeting. Happy budgeting. I can pay cash, I can pay check, I can pay wire transfer, I can pay gift card, I can pay credit, I can pay anything you like. I can pay cash, I can pay check, I can pay wire transfer, I can pay gift card, I can pay credit, I can pay anything you like.